welcome to the Meet RX Success Story podcast. I'm here with our coach from Meet RX, Giovanna, and I want to say hello to her and welcome her. Thank you for coming, Giovanna. Thank you very much for having me. It's wonderful. Um, can you tell me what was your life like and your health conditions? What kind of foods did you eat prior to coming to carnivore? Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Peruvian, and the main, uh, the main, if you guys don't know, but there's like 3,000 varieties of potatoes over there, so we, I grew up eating potatoes, and you know, the classic things of all the colors, and all the fruits, and um, greens, and I remember I used to, after um, high school, I, I dealt with weight issues too, I gained, you know, the classic thing of college, gaining weight, and I did all kinds of um, diets, the rice diet, this, the cabbage soup diet, all those kind of things, yeah, even acupuncture, I remember. And um, I never, it never worked. I, I stay from my late teens until like 30s, until I came to the United States and um, which is gonna be 21 years ago. And back then I was scared to go back to Peru even bigger. And um, so, you know, the classic um, uh, calories in, calories out, I was exercising like crazy, but, um, but I changed my, my eating because I never, I never ate fast food. So I, I don't like fast food, I can't. And the family I stay with when I came to the United States, they will eat packaged foods and, and fast foods. And that's why I lost the weight because I wasn't eating <laughs> their food. But um, then later, you know, I, I kept, I stayed pretty um, well with, with uh, weight for a while until uh, menopause. And that's when I started perimenopause. That's when my hormones um, started to bother me. And I, I didn't eat like the standard American diet, but it was packaged foods, things and and um a little bit of everything so prior to that but then once i i got to that point when my hormones were bothering me i went to my doctor my doctor sent me the prescription to go home with uh no gluten and no sugar that's all she told me don't go and eat lots of cabbage to get rid of the uh, extra estrogen estrogen and um and so i i i found the keto diet through that because I just was reading and then what am I gonna do? So that's how when I started on October, 2016, I did the keto and um, she also told me don't meet, don't eat meat, but I didn't, I didn't follow that. I, I, I that part I couldn't. So I, like she said just once in a while, some fish or some chicken, but not red meat uh, because of the hormones. But I told her that we were already um, working on the um, like, more grass-fed food meats and but it's still that I didn't I didn't like I said we didn't we like meat here in the house so we um I went back the year after and um she she hugged me because my hormones came back to balance with keto then um because of keto I I I was learning so much I was listening to podcasts I was um, I participated, I went to KetoCon the, the next year, so that will be 2017. I met people there and through those, uh, through those connections, I, I learned about um, carnivore. So uh, that was in 2018, I participated in like a social media carnivore uh, uh, card or something for a month where that's where I learned. And that was for the next KetoCon the next year, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I think so. So I went, I did it and um, I was doing that. I learned, I, I started to dip my feet into that, like a little bit like, okay, I'm learning about this. I was feeling, I will, I will see the difference with my, um, especially bloating. I didn't have like real health issues, but the hormonal issues that's, that happened during that, Part, but I didn't really have, you know, things that will think um, like um, hard things to, to have to heal 
But once I um, noticed and I started the carnivore, I noticed like, oh, I never realized that, you know, my stomach can be flatter or, you know, I can um, like have these, these sometimes these joints, this little, it's called trigger finger. And um, I do feel that inflammation goes down when I'm eating just meat, like than when I wasn't, I was eating a little bit of everything. So that those little things that I didn't know I was having. And then once I transition, I can see like even my skin, you know, I can feel my skin people, I, I'm 52 and I like, oh, really, you don't look like 52 or, or my, um, my nails growing the stronger they always grew and now i love to cook so they are always short i like to be in the kitchen and um making things for my family so they are never long long but they they are hard now and so i can see that and then one of the things that i have improved also and uh for me is that i like to work out i've been working out for a long time but I um now I, my muscles are showing. Now I can I can you know my husband sometimes teases me because I'm sitting and and then like this part of the the the, the bicep is like showing and he's like oh my god look at you Hulk like you know those kind of things that I didn't see before. So we 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 play with my one of my sons my teenager and like we we flex and play with those muscle so that's that's also nice that i you know i'm aging but i am growing muscles mm -hmm. so yep. that, that's something else that um i've seen that it's better now right so you sort of came to carnivore from keto and yes. going to the keto con gathering uh -huh. okay yeah. yeah 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 that's and that's how i i i've been there i I have friends now. Um, I have a very good friend who's been, he had some issues with uh, epilepsy and started keto like that, but then he went to um, carnivore too. And he has, um, he hasn't had an episode for a long time. That's awesome. Uh, like a um, very high carnivore fat, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you, is your whole family doing carnivore and is there? No, I, no, my, um, you know what? And I'll tell you a story. My sons, so they're both are teens. And um, of course they have uh, acne, right? Not that, not that every teen has to have it, but they do. And so I, I you know, mommy's always crazy. She doesn't know anything. So, oh, no. <laughs> so I, I, um, you know, I buy creams, I buy this soap and these things to treat and that and that. And so I, in January, uh, on December, just in December, one of them, he was like, I'm so tired of this. And I go, well, I can help you if you want me to. I can, you just go carnivore. Let's try it. So, so we tried for the whole month of January. And I have pictures because I took pictures of uh, different stages so he can see himself. And um, and I took the pictures, and he uh, at the end of the month he saw the change in his skin, and he said, "This is just ridiculous." And I go, "What happened?" And I go, "This it, it is just I can I could not believe that it was this just the diet." And I go, "So so that's what you think it was the, the whole thing?" And he goes, "Well, yeah, because I tried all the creams and all the um, soaps that." you were telling me I'm trying and and it's just the diet mom and I go and what is it most in the diets he likes chips and they know I won't buy them and um like since I went keto for example we don't have cereal in the house and there's no snacks in the house they, their friends come to the house and, <laughs> and they tell they bring their own little whatever gummies and whatever and they, they, my son said, mom, it's because my friends say that we don't have snacks in our house. And I go, yes, we do. We, we can have some, um, like some, for them, I have like uh, carrot sticks or um, I have some um, uh, like rolled up uh, ham and cheese. 
and things like that. And I go, yes, we do have those kind of snacks. And he goes, well, I mean, cheese it's or gummies. And I go, well, no, we don't have those kind of things. So my son told me when his skin improved, he said, it's, it's the bad oils, mom, and the, the meat. The meat got better. So I said, well, good thing you know now. So whenever he um, he's reading some, he called me one time, not too long ago, and he goes, mom, can I buy this? Um, I don't know what, what, oh, some kind of cereal. He actually found, I found this individual cereal and he called me and I go, can I buy it? And I go, did you read the ingredients? And then he goes, oh, canola oil, Never mind." So <laughs> he didn't even worry about the um, sugar, which I go, he goes, "Never mind." So I just, and <laughs> he just didn't get it. But I'm, I'm glad it was that, but it's much better. I told them when they move out of the house, I'm just going to give them an air fryer so they can put their steak there and cook it. They don't need to have ramen. <laughs> yeah, that's great, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay, that's excellent that, that he's had seen that healing too. And yeah. I know you mentioned your fingernails and what all have you noticed in your own body that has changed from going carnivore? Well, like I said, my muscles are much better, much like I'm stronger. I'm lifting heavier. I, um, I do like to, um, challenge myself. I, I have a timer that sometimes I, uh, I have it all the time because I like to, um, I read a book, it's better than before by Ruben Gretchen. And it tells you that if you don't, to make a, something a routine, you need to schedule it. So in my, I, I have like a timer that reminded me for whole year to do pull-ups, for example, and I wasn't able to do it. Now it's part of me. I just do it every day around seven in the morning when I come back from the gym. but. Those little timers that are reminding me of little things that I can do for myself in, in that uh, getting stronger at the gym is because of the meat. I um, also may sleep. I, um, I notice that, and this is something I, um, I, I went through a little hard and stressful time during like 2019, I think it was, or 20, yeah, 2019. And by then I was already carnivore. I was already eating very like much um, meat in, uh, in bone broth. I was making bone broth and drinking it every day. And um, it was a family issue thing here. And um, I was able to go to sleep every night and knowing myself, because I'm very sentimental, I used to be a crier, and I wasn't, I wasn't crying. It made me think, it was, it made me think like, okay, what do I need to do? What's the plan? How am I going to handle this? And when I went to bed, I was able to fall asleep. I couldn't believe that I was able to fall asleep. And meanwhile, I was going to, um, the NTA for the, to be a functional nutritional therapist practitioner. And um, in one of our meetings, one of the girls brought up her client that was going through some kind of um, family issues at home and stress and how to handle. And our instructor said that um, the best supplement that she could um, prescribe, which was not a prescription, but it, she could, uh, uh, suggest for anybody going through mental uh, issues, stressful moments, and mental health was bone broth. And I'm like, oh, well, I was already there. That's why probably I'm sleeping. And, uh, you know, it's the glycine, it's the, all the amino acids. So I, um, I, was like, I, I was giving myself already that support without knowing that I was giving myself all those amino acids. I think that carnivore is, it's a biohack. It's, it's a biohack for, for improvement in your life. And that's, oh, again, I, I, when I uh, talk with somebody, even when I was teaching just not too long ago, my mother, my mother, they were visiting here from Peru and telling them about the importance of meat for their age and um, how muscle can be protected by it and how we evolve from eating meat. I think um, 
Now, I, I work with children too. I work in the early intervention um, from zero to three. And one of the things that I always talk with the families, I tell them, okay, I'm taking my um, hat of inter early interventionist out and I'm just getting aside Giovanna. So, but I ask the families, how, what is the, your ch child's diet? And I tell them about uh, meat. I tell them about how they need to build those um, muscles and those, it's the building blocks for them to be growing. They are growing, so they need that. And I work with a lot of children with autism. So I tell them, um, they, and I know they have issues. Those babies have issues about eating meat. They don't like to eat, for some reason, protein. It's more carbohydrate. Um, addiction kind of thing. And so um, I teach them to make the shuffles and sneak the meat there. And, and um, families have seen, some of the families that have been able to apply and change the diets, they have seen that it calm, calms them down. You know, it's more calm, a child that has been crying or screaming or they, they can change and get all those colorful um, foods that are, <laughs> are artificially colored too that makes them you know hyperactive and i do think that that meat is much better for them too yes that's incredible that you can teach all them because that's really something that really could help that type of child with autism i'm sure that would help them so much i i I think the, the families that and i tell them always do not believe me don't don't believe me do your own research and I, I send them, you know, uh, links and information, but I tell them, go, go and check this out and, and see what, um, and one example that I like to tell um, people is that, you know, how we've been, oh, my nails are breaking or my hair is falling or I'm getting some acne or breakout, like, you know, how it's showing outside what you are, you've been eating, well, it's the same for what you are eating, it's going to be the same in your brain and in every single cell in your body. Mm. So that, that's my approach. If you are showing outside your lack of nutrients, imagine how those nutrients are missing inside your cells, in every single organ in your, your, your brain to start. Right. Oh, yeah, that makes all kinds of sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like I like to give that example. It makes it a little bit more uh, uh, like real, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I can relate to that. Right. Oh, yeah, that makes all kinds of sense. So you you went to nutrition school and you're a coach at Meet RX, and so someone coming to you wanting information about um, carnivore, what would you tell them mostly that? you know, if they were having questions about whether they should start the carnivore diet, what kind of information would you give them or what kind of coaching strategy would you use? I will, um, I will find out first what's, what's their why. What's their, um, what's their uh, motivation for, for trying to even find out about this diet, trying to find out why how did you hear about this? What brought you to this? And what are your internal uh, motivations? And then, um, then through that, find like, okay, so what are your weaknesses and your strengths? What can you bring to help yourself do a change if you are wanting to make a change? Because then once you have that motivation and that why, then it's going to be easier to um, to find the strength to to stay and then to to start just to start, right? So that that will be my um, my first part. And then there is so many resources now. There is so many books now. Um, just to start, Dr. Baker's. I like uh, Judy Cho with her um, with her graphs. I um, I brought up couple of graphs for, for my father, especially when they like scared of cholesterol and eggs. And I'm like, no, well, look at this, look at this graph. Look what all the things that you can find on the egg yolk. So um, 
like I said, there are so many, so many resources and um, we can, we can provide with that information and just even going back there, there is now uh, resources that are showing of back in the day when it was also recommended to eat only meat. So that I will, I think I will be the source of resources mm -hmm. to, to, like I said, do not believe me. You know, I'm not, I'm not the expert, but there are so many people that can help you. And so I will just give you, a, like, it will be more like a support, a guidance and take you by, by your hand to see all these little examples of these little people, all these big people, all these books and podcasts and articles that you can find and we can work together. And so then you're like, okay, well, this is convincing. Now I think that I want to start or I'm sure I want to start. So let's start now. And after that, we can, you know, let, let's see, where do we start? What do you like to eat? We start from, it's easier to start from there. You know, right. You like to eat because it's like, oh yeah, I don't like fish. Well, you don't have to have fish. I don't like liver. Well, you don't have to have liver if you don't want to, but what do you like? Oh, I just like ground beef, that's all. Okay, well, let's start from that. You know, it, it start it start from, from, from what that person prefers will be the best way instead of doing it the way I will, uh, I, I start it, you know, my ways are, if everybody's different and not everybody has the same likes that way you can keep uh more um commitment right? right that's excellent so um you said you helped your mom and dad can you go into that a little yeah. bit more yes yeah. so um like i said i'm from peru and my uh my poor parents have been stuck in their house peru has very bad restrictions right now with covid and it was worse last year. And so they couldn't travel. And as soon as they opened up the <laughs> borders, we were able to like, okay, you guys need to get out of there because they even had them use masks outdoors and uh, even paying a penalty, they didn't. And they couldn't go to the store or things like that. And I was, so they, they were able to come here and they felt freedom. But my mom is, um, so my both, well, my dad had cancer, prostate cancer. It's been like, um, it's been like five years, four years maybe that since he has been cleared. But my mom was diagnosed with um, diabetes uh, maybe around 10 years ago or so. She's 74 now, no, 78. And um, so she's been diagnosed with, and she was taking metformin. Now her, doctor told her, I think, to take like two milligrams, but she already was taking one milligram. She wasn't listening to her doctor in that sense. She was scared of taking so much. So her blood sugar, it was like in the, in the hundreds, 116, 100 something, and with the metformin. And when she, she told me that a couple of times it was like 140, something like that, 120 something. So I kept telling her every time we talk, because we talk regularly, mom, try, um, what do you have for breakfast? What are you eating? Like they, like I said, potatoes, there's a lot of starch, Peruvian food is very starchy. And quinoa is a very big staple. Uh, rice, because we have a lot of influence from um, Asians. Potatoes, like I said. So she was like, oh yeah, I need my oatmeal with one egg or my quinoa and I, that. And I go, it's like, it's not how it should be. You're not taking the medication so you can eat what you want. Mm -hmm. And and so she she was like, Mara, I don't know what I'm gonna eat. I'm scared of being hungry. She always was scared of being hungry. So so when they came, they came on um, February 21st. So I said, okay, I even put a plan of, of meals and stuff to make. And I said, okay, so we're gonna start. Um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna serve them whatever I serve my kids for breakfast, which is. I, I give. I told my boys, um, you just you always have to start with a protein. Uh, and your first meal has to be if you like because they like potatoes, they like rice, they like so they have it once in a while. But um, I I have um, they are more like paleo. But my um, 
So I give them like a burger or a steak and uh, an eggs for breakfast. That's what normally they, they take for the breakfast. So um, I, I started making those kind of meals for my parents too. And whenever there was some kind of potatoes for my mom, I would just make for her. Because she's like, oh, she would look at it like I go, well, you can have cauliflower. You can have. So I started you know, reversing that, that um, mentality. And I, every time I ask her, are you satisfied? Are you hungry? She goes, no, no, I'm completely full. full. I could go all the way to next day. And also I was giving them bone broth every day. And, um, and also eggs, though, like, don't be scared of eggs. You have to have at least two or three. And I was, I was bringing up some readings, like, like I said, the books, I was opening the books and I showing them some graphs or telling them, the muscle, importance of muscle mass at their age. I, um, we also exercise because I work out, so I will have her, you know, use bands and, and strength a little bit. So um, I go, mom, um, call your doctor. Can you call your doctor in Peru and tell her that you, if, she, if you can uh, decrease your, your metformin? And she actually, she did. And she told the doctor told her, well, take half of what you're, uh, I prescribed you. And, and, and the, my mom said, okay, but then she hung up and I go, did you tell her that you were already taking half? And she goes, no. And like, well, you need to tell her the truth. You need to call her and tell her the truth. We are not here to prescribe or take away medications. So I can't do that. But I told her, let's call the doctor. Now the fun thing with, um, it's amazing, but that's the fun thing with Peru. You can, you can, you you can call your doctor, and the doctor will answer directly. They have their WhatsApp, and they they have their own phone. You know, it's just not much more personal in that sense. So it was easy to get her doctor. So she, I go, you well, you need to call her and tell her that you already were taking half. So, so the doctor told her, okay, like try because she was taking her blood glucose every day with me here while she was eating, and it was ninety four. 96, under 100, every time under 100. So she, um, the doctor said, okay, well, that's fine. Take it off, but take your blood glucose uh, two hours after meals too, and let me know. So she started doing that. And it was stable again. It was because she wasn't having carbs like crazy. That's why like, so her, her blood glucose stays stable instead of going in a big spike because of, you know, the doctor didn't know that, um, but my, that, that she was eating mostly uh, proteins, but, um, but she told my, hey, my sister, my daughter is helping me and she's changing my diet. And so I, um, I want to try this and see what happens. And because of COVID, they were supposed to stay just two weeks. They ended up staying six weeks. So it gave us enough time to do all these experiments. I was even giving her, it was funny because one day I was carrying my uh, food processor, the motor, and it's heavy. So I go, well, here, you can have this and do your squats. <laughs> so she, you know, she was, and I told her, you, the more muscle you use, that glucose is gonna go to your muscles and it's not gonna be just circulating on your blood and giving those, those, those spikes. So. I, I, I made sure I was explaining why to do that. So that way she's, she's, um, she's gonna go back in and continue that. Now, my dad used to think and used to say, no, your mom's um, diabetes is just emotional. It's just when she's sad or when she's worried about something. But now that my father saw the numbers, he realized because he likes to cook, so he realized now that he's not going to be going and buying bread anymore or making potatoes anymore, things like that. And so now they, they went committed. They left, uh, they left um, Texas and they said, we're not going to, I promise we're not going to be traitors. We're not going to be going away from what we've been, what you've been teaching us. They wrote a lot of recipes and 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 um even peruvian recipes that we uh, make there is one that is called ají de gallina which is very it's like make with chicken shredded chicken and the the mix is some kind of turmeric sauce but you blend it with milk and and um bread 
and it comes. So instead of bread, I just use um, heavy whipping cream mm -hmm. and, and there's the same, uh, the same spice and that's it. And onions and chicken. So it was completely, it, com it was completely just meat and fat. Mm -hmm. And um, they go like, oh yeah, we could do that. And that was one of the favorite uh, dishes. So now they went with new ideas and they are making, now they are making keto breads. I, I taught them like three different versions. One of them is the carnivore, uh, just with chicken and, and eggs mm -hmm. and chaffles. I, I bought them a little uh, waffle maker so they can make the little, so now they are, and my mom is sending me once in a while her uh, uh, screenshots of her blood glucose. Oh, yeah. So she's she's sending me some, and like it's a hundred or ninety nine. She has to go and do some testings now, and but she's not taking the metformin anymore. Wow, that's amazing. That's wonderful. I know it makes you feel good too to have helped them so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm I'm very happy that they 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 realize it's possible. Mm -hmm. I, I, it makes me, and I told them also about the, um, the mental support that, you know, the, the meat can give you the, that it's, it's, it's like peace. It is, it is, it's very, very much makes you peaceful. Yeah. And you said you were it, sleeping really well and. It, it's, um. Even my, my ways of reacting to situations now, uh, one of my sons, I asked him, did you notice that I am a little bit more calm? And he goes, yeah, you are much more like you don't, I, you don't react anymore like fast or like just out of no, like, yeah, you like, I even go and try to touch his heart. So he's like, okay, then we can talk. We can calm down and talk. It's, and I think that's, um, it, it, it took me a while to learn that, but it's, it's, I did it and, and it, I think it's, I know it's the meat. I, I, especially, I do know that, that red meat. Yeah, <laughs> it's the proper, know. proper human diet. It's, it's really it, good. Yes, it is. And I listened to, um, and I have sent that link to Dr. Um, Eid. Mm -hmm. She talks about that uh, mental health and um, meat. Yeah. It's one presentation that she has on YouTube that she did it on the carnivore. Um, I think it was 2017 or 2018 when it was in, in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I send it to people. Too bad my parents don't speak English because I will, I can, I, I did talk about it, but it's not the same to listen to that expert, right? Right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But I'm sure you tell them in, in your language. And that's amazing. I, I love hearing the story of your family and, and your, your experiences, too, where you have healed and have been able to sleep well and, and so forth. And in the it's sort of like a carnivore zen that you get with from the... Yeah, that's exactly the word. That will be the word. That's... Yeah. Yes. So... I know it'll help many people because everyone's like looking for healing and they, they need to hear these success stories and because it just helps them so much. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to contact you, they can find you on Meet Our Ex under the coaches and you'd be happy to help them, I'm sure. So um, thank you so much for coming to share, Giovanna. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me too. Sure. I'm going to be uh, looking forward to help anybody who wants them. Like I said, I'm Spanish speaker too, so. Yes. That's I remember that I, I got, um, I actually got interested on in doing the coach uh, uh, because of Dr. Baker. He said, you know, he was posting that he wanted to some bilingual people and that he was learning Spanish too. So oh, okay. that's why I got like, oh yeah, I can do that. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Giovanna. Have a great Thank evening. You. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.